Okay, so for my project, I have Slope Boulevard, named after John Drake Slope. Uh, Slope Boulevard is in the Sunset District, kind of actually very close to SI, and is uh, also very close to like the Great Highway in the ocean as well. There are parts of it are close to the ocean. Um, yeah. So the first important thing on Slope Boulevard is the San Francisco Zoo, and it's important for a lot of reasons. Uh, the main one is kind of just the entertainment it provides. Um, I know a lot of people growing up like to visit the zoo and everything, so it's a great opportunity for families to come kind of bond, just have some time together. That's the first thing on Slope. So the second important thing on Slope Boulevard is Ocean Beach, which is right off the end of it, right there, right off the Slope. Um, and again, it's kind of just going back to the entertainment thing. A lot of people love going to the beach, just having some time with friends. I know seniors, we did our senior sunset there. Um, so just another great spot for people to just kind of hang out and everything. And that's why Ocean Beach is so important. The next important thing is right off of like 41st and Slope, there is a, currently it's a Christmas tree place, but usually earlier in the year is pumpkins. It's just, this is right after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. Um, and it is currently being used for Christmas trees. Again, it's just another spot. It's a place for families to celebrate the holidays, have some fun together. Um, so that is why the Christmas tree area is important. So the fourth place on Slope Boulevard that is important is Lakeshore Plaza. Um, I know personally it's very popular with SI kids. I could go here during like an X period on a Tuesday or Friday and there's basically a 99% chance I'll see someone from SI here. Um, there are a ton of different restaurants as well as like a Big Five, it looks like a Ross. Um, um, a grocery store so it's just a very kind of accessible spot for people who need it and also there's a place to go hang out and have fun together um, so that is the fourth spot that uh, for Slope Boulevard and I forgot to reference this is Slope or Blakeshore Plaza Here the fifth spot sorry on Slope Boulevard that is important is the Merced Manor Reservoir which is right behind me um, the reservoirs are obviously very important for any ecosystem because of the water supply it provides and also holds in the event of emergencies or and whatnot um, so this reservoir is no different. Um, I've also seen people hang out here. It's actually very nice outside. Um, like great building right there, beautiful architecture. Um, so that is the fifth spot. And then finally, I have a sixth spot in case the ocean was somewhat controversial, uh, but we have the Grove, which is also very important. I think it's just kind of going back to like the ocean and the zoo. It's another spot for people to hang out. Um, I know I see people there all the time or like families go there. There's just a ton of space for people to kind of hang out and uh, do like recreational activities and whatnot. Um, so that's the sixth and final spot on Slope Boulevard that I find important. So this is a picture of John Drake Sloat in what was a military uniform at the time. As you can tell, very um, big military commander and just an overall solid guy. So I'm gonna recount a short biography about John Drake Sloat. So Sloat was born July 26th, 1781 in Slotesburg, New York. And unfortunately, he grew up without his parents in his life and was orphaned at a young age due to his father being mistakenly shot before he was born. And his mother died a few years uh, after Sloat was born. So Sloat only got to enjoy the presence of his mom for a couple of years before he was raised um, by his grandparents. And as he grew up, he moved to New York City at just age 19 on his own. And while in New York, he was given the opportunity to join the U.S. Navy and he decided to enlist uh, shortly thereafter. And slowly but surely, he climbed the ranks of the Navy, worked really hard. Um, he was first appointed midshipman in 1800 and was the sailing master of the man in charge of the navigation on multiple ships for a few years but until he was finally promoted to lieutenant. And from there, he continued to climb the ranks until he was finally appointed captain in 1837, became commander of the United States Navy uh, Pacific Fleet, which is a pretty big deal. Um, in 1840. So now that I've given a brief kind of biography about John Sloat, um, I want to talk about why he's particularly deserving of getting a street named after him. Um, so I think he's particularly deserving of a street being named after him because of his claiming of California for the United States, him being the first military governor in California, um, kind of just the long term effects of his dedication of service to the United States, um, and just kind of his service in general in the United States Navy. Um, so kind of going back to him making captain in 1844, this is kind of a little bit right before the Mexican-American uh, war started, which was started over territory and boundary uh, disputes over kind of by the southern border. Um, so when war finally broke out, Sloat was given the orders to voyage to California and claim it on behalf of the United States if tensions became too high. Um, and so when war finally did break out in Texas, um, Slow took his fleet. He did exactly that. He went to California, 
landed in Monterey in early July. Um, and after little resistance from Mexican forces in California, he claimed California on July 7th in 1846 and raised the United States flag over the Monterey Customs House, which was kind of the unofficial so-called kind of capital of the territory of California at the time. Um, and that really kind of changed the momentum of the Mexican-American War because after the capture of California, the United States had little to no trouble um, capturing other territories. They quickly captured places like Nevada, uh, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, um, <clears throat> and also parts of Colorado and Wyoming as well. Um, and the war ended after a little under two years, actually, um, just showing how quickly the war was actually resolved. Um, and kind of just the long-term effects of this capture included like the United States then having access to the gold rush, which only happened a few years later. Um, in 1848, the first bit of gold was found by James Marshall at Sutter's Mill. Um, and had Cal had Sutter, or sorry, had Sloat not made that capture, it's entirely possible that Mexico would have flourished as a result of the gold rush and not California and the United States instead. Um, so that's one of the things that makes him particularly deserving. Um, in addition to that, he was also given the role of military governor of California, which is essentially the person in charge of overseeing the military and its respected like politics and policies within California. Um, and while he kind of stepped aside and stepped down and handed the, that role over to Robert F. Stockton, um, he was the first military governor of California, which makes it pretty special. Um, and this is, he only stepped down because of his health issues. It wasn't that he was a unpopular person or anything. It's just he had to step down due to health issues, um, which also made him kind of give up control of the Pacific fleet as well. Um, those are kind of the two main reasons I think he's particularly deserving of a street sign. Um, the first one, obviously, the capture of California, but also kind of his effects of California's ability to flourish because of his capture at the Gold Rush, um, being the first military governor, and then also his extremely long service uh, to the United States and the United States Navy as well. Um, from He served in the military for over 65 years. He went from 1800 to 1866 um, when he retired as Rear Admiral, which is a very very good um, ranking within the United States Navy. So those are just the reasons why I think he's deserving of a street sign. So for a local ce celebrity who I think is deserving of a street sign, I would say Buster Posey, and I'll touch on why I think that in a second. Um, so I think Buster Posey is particularly deserving of a street sign, um, kind of in a similar capacity to what the Giants have done before for former baseball stars for their organization. Um, but I think he does, he's a little bit more deserving um, first off, just the contributions he made athletically to the team. I mean, three World Series in five years is nothing um, to laugh about. It's very impressive and extremely hard to do. Um, and he's just a phenomenal player, extremely talented, just overall very good guy. But more importantly, um, Buster Posey and his wife have the BP28 Foundation, um, which was started by Buster and his wife, Kristen. Um, and they work to help kids, to help with kids who have pediatric cancer by raising awareness and like funding, um, funding research and treatments and potential treatments. Um, so I think just kind of, that's the, really the main reason why I think he's deserving of the sign is many athletes have a platform and don't choose to do anything with it. Um, but I think him having that foundation really speaks to him as a person and shows how like truly good natured and well-intentioned he is. Um, he's not just another athlete who just likes, just plays baseball and whatever makes a ton of money. Um, but he actually does something with that. Um, and he's made a ton of donations to his foundation, and he's done um, events, charities, all sorts of things, charitable events, sorry. Um, and it really just speaks to him as a person why he's particularly deserving of a street sign in San Francisco. So thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you really enjoyed uh, learning about John Slow as well as why I think Buster Posey um, is deserving of a street sign. And yeah, thank you.